uh, many of you out there will want to have Brian and I because we are Arsenal supporters and we lost badly over the weekend. I can't actually wait for that segment. But you can be a part of the show. Do send an SMS to 6565. Follow us on Twitter and tweet us. Our handle is at morning at NTV and our Facebook page is morning at NTV. Do leave a question or comment and uh, we love to hear from you. Now we will return to the Kampala Serena Hotel rooftop to Simon and the big story. A very good morning once again. We're coming to you live from the rooftop of the Kampala Serena Hotel this morning, the 10th day of February 2014. And it's the big story. I'm sure all of you watching us have a handset, a telephone handset in your hands or in your pocket, like myself here. And this is what we call the mobile. In Uganda, they call it Akasimu Kali Ka Buriwendi Nkufuna or Akomungalo. So they call it. And so we're asking ourselves this morning to what extent has this handset, mobile handset, changed your life, my life, everybody's life? And to what extent has it destroyed your life, if I may ask? And this morning, of course, to join us, we are looking at the biggest telecom player in the market, MTN. And who else to feature with us this morning other than the chief executive himself? Good morning and welcome to Morning at NTV, good Mr. Morning, Mazen you. Munre. Good morning to you and good morning to all who are watching us. Too. Very good. Now, there's about 15 million uh, uh, subscribers to mobile telecom in this country, of which MTN has over uh, or close to 60% uh, market share. Uh, tell us how it feels having all these people on your network for starters? No, definitely uh, the telecom sector is growing uh, in Uganda and I think uh, the number of users also increasing uh, month after month. Uh, currently there is almost uh, getting to 17 million uh, users mm -hmm. in Uganda, out of which uh, MTN has more than 53%. Uh, uh, the story uh, continue to be successful, MTN continue to leading the market, uh, continue uh, the investments uh, needed to co create capacity. Uh, to accommodate all the new users. Uh, we are talking about voice, we are talking about SMS, those are the traditional services. Let, but me as well. right, let me just stop you right there. Innovation to ensure that those who are on your network get value for money. Oftentimes I pick my phone, place a phone call, and before I know it, I can't communicate further, it's dropped, and I've been charged for a full minute. To what extent do you have reports of the occurrence and frequency of such cases? And what does that tell you about the robustness of your system. Okay, definitely uh, this is a challenge that uh, we are facing. Uh, and uh, let me just uh, clarify to you, when your call is dropped, uh, we charge per second. So it means not the whole minute is, is lost. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you know, uh, the, the way that we continue uh, growing in the market, then, then there is a need to create more uh, capacity. And creating more capacity, it requires expansion and upgrades, which require to have some inconveniences uh, for some of the customers. Let me just give you an example. If uh, there is a, the number of cars is growing on the road, it means you need to expand the way. Absolutely. And you cannot expand without creating some inconveniences mm -hmm. during that process. So that's the same thing when the number of users is growing. You cannot say, okay, stop, don't make calls. We need to expand our network. But you, you, start, why, you, you are operating in a country that has got 34 million Ugandans, and about half of that has mobile handsets. Isn't it in your view that possibly you should start planning now for the other 15 million to come on board? So that's about in the next two years, we have a huge inconvenience this year, but then for the next say, 10 years, we do not have a lot of inconvenience as compared to what we're going through now. The, 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 theoretically, that's right, mm -hmm. but you cannot expand from day one to accommodate 34 million. Mm -hmm. The investment has to continue. You have shareholders, you have stakeholders to engage and involve and convince that the Uganda is the right place to invest. Well, your, big, your and, biggest stakeholder here is the market, and the market has voted you tremendously. No, definitely. Well. Look, I mean, uh, in 2013 alone, we have added more than 1 million users to our network. Absolutely. And uh, we have also a very aggressive plan for this year. In one year only, we, we invested uh, more than uh, $70 million just to put more cell sites and sites everywhere. But that's a cycle we go through it. And uh, definitely, we are in a, in a market where we are continue growing. We cannot compare ourselves to a market where it's fully saturated, where there is no need to expand and there is no need to create some of those inconveniences for the users. To create fairness to those, your colleagues in the telecoms industry who have not had the chance to sit with me here, but I believe that you're speaking on behalf of the entire industry, 
previously we knew the mobile phone as one where I would just place a phone call or send a text message. But right about now, I can do almost anything with my mobile phone. I can pay school fees for my daughter. I can send money to wherever it is. And this is because of the innovation in your industry and very specifically mobile money. Now, there is talk that you may not be an ordinary, you may not be a bank at all, you're a telecoms company for health sake, but in terms of volumes of moving money from one place to another and conducting transactions left, right and center, you are handling a lot more than many small banks in this town. Isn't that putting a toll on your core uh, objective of providing uh, you know, proper telecommunication as, uh, as we knew it from the start? Look, I'm reading a lot of stories about this subject. And uh, look, in, in the new world, uh, mobile money is a new currency. It is not a secret. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and currently, guess who is our competitor? The banks? No. The fuel companies? Perhaps? No. <laughs> our competitor is the cash. The cash? Cash. So mm -hmm. there we, this is where we're moving forward to compete with the cash. Mobile money is a new currency that we are looking forward that every single user, ordinary person in Uganda should use mobile money instead of the cash. Uh, to create this capacity, definitely we have been doing very well in terms of money transfer, bill payments, school fees, uh, pay for the TV, uh, national water, electricity, all those things. In 2014, our primary focus on how can we make the mobile money more and more the, the primary and the direct uh, payment mode for all the customers in Uganda. So means you do, we don't want you to carry any more cash. Uh -huh. We want you everywhere you go, you use your mobile money, whether in supermarket, whether in pharmacy, whether in the clinic, whether in saloon, whether in the club, wherever you go. Tell me, Mazen, don't you, at this point in time, with the success of mobile money, get a lingering temptation to possibly position MTN not as a teleco company, as it is, but as a bank of some sort? No, but let me clarify something. We are not operating mobile money ourselves only, MTN. We are the enabler. We have other banks with us who are working with us, who are also uh, our partners for driving mobile money in the country. So MTN is not only alone. Okay? Yes, but so, uh, you are largely one of the most successful platforms on which mobile money No, is definitely. Concerned. But I'm saying the transactional level and the process for mobile money and the process for, for the floats all goes through the banks as well. So there is definitely a very big advantage for some of the existing banks. And we continue growing and we're working more with more banks this year. I'll give you a personal experience. Many times when I travel to my upcountry domicile, I have so many people waiting to get a piece of the hard-earned cash I make in the city. And previously, I would say, no, 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 I am uh, bring so long cash, but let me go to the bank, pick the money and bring back. Oh, when I return, I will pay you. Now, they simply tell you, send me mobile money because Correct. they expect that you have money there so, and then. You've not had similar complaints of people saying you're making them less liquid than they possibly mm. always post chat to be? No, no, definitely, uh, look, uh, it's the mobile money, the banks, uh, for somehow they went very slow. Mm -hmm. I mean, the partnership between the banks and the telecom is strategic. We cannot drive this product alone and the banks also cannot continue and sitting alone. So it has to be mutual partnerships between the telecom and the banks to take this product forward. The banks cannot exist everywhere. They cannot go to the remote of the remotest areas in Uganda where telecom exists. So that's the kind of partnership that the banks and the, and the telecom need to work together. How can we enable more and more uh, cashless uh, nation in Uganda? Let's get down to the proliferation of the internet. Beyond sending across uh, you know, voice services, now you are into data. And indeed, from wherever you can get an MTN network, you possibly are able to get some internet connected to your phone if you paid for it. To what extent is this proliferation of the internet uh, feeding into the general development of creating this to be an e-country where everything is done online, more or less. Okay, let me just tell you something like uh, MTN now is the largest uh, uh, internet provider in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So uh, although we are known as a telecom, as the voice and mobile money, but we are also more than almost getting to 3 million uh, users, okay, subscribers. 3 million subscribers are using the internet on monthly basis through MTN. And that's only the subscribers, so definitely many of them, they are sharing this with the, with the others. So the number of users can go more. Uh, this is where we're sitting now, and we know Uganda is uh, one of the most youngest generation in terms of population in Uganda. So we have to create this platform to enable more people to use the internet services. And as you know, uh, the level of development for any country determined by the number of the people who are using the internet. 
Well, uh, for the people who manufacture beer, they always have a close themselves that can only be served to people who are below 18 and there's always responsible consumption. So the same with, uh, uh, you know, companies that produce cigarettes. With you who provide internet services, do you have a cap to what extent this internet proliferation is used to do the right things? Don't we use internet to rob people? Because many times we've seen people use your platform to send spam messages and, you know, uh, cause a lot of conning. We've seen people con others using mobile money. We've seen a lot of irresponsible citizenry facilitated by a wonderful network like you provide and the wonderful products that you provide. To what extent is MTN concerned about the growth of crime on the platforms on which, uh, which you provide as an innovation to the way life is led? Look, uh, we, we, are, we have almost uh, 9 million subscribers now in, uh, in Uganda. And, you know, on monthly basis, all the 9 million subscribers have a free uh, quota for internet access. So having the internet is not only to pay for it. So we have already a promotion that started like two years back where every single user has a quota, almost 15 mega, to be used on a monthly basis. But uh, in terms of having uh, access and security uh, that can manage the, the level how people can use the internet in the right way, we have done a lot of self-initiatives which can control uh, uh, the process of having making sure people are writing using the the, the, uh, the the internet however this is cannot be done by only MTN yeah but for you MTN specifically what exact to what extent are you uh, putting across responsible usage of your platforms so the, we, we how have, much do you facilitate the law enforcement agencies for example correct uh, in terms of MTN systems already have uh, many protocols we put in place which we can control the usage uh, in terms of uh, which uh, areas that can people access for the internet. However, this is also continue in collaboration with other stakeholders in the country, with the lawmakers and with the other regulators that really need to work all together how we can take this policy to the next level. Uh, Mazen, you're not answering specifics of my question. I know you would love to give us all these glowing tributes and wonderful figures that MTN has put in place, but we are looking at the specifics of protecting your customers from unscrupulous uh, members of the same society who use the same platform to fleece them off. No, but I mean, I'm saying that MTN has already have uh, built-in protocols in place mm -hmm. where a certain traffic uh, cannot be accessed through the platform. However, this Let, is... Let's speak in a language that the guy watching us on TV will possibly understand. He has been asked, that he's been called and uh, informed how he's won some money off some promotion using an MTN number. Or he's been sent a message saying you've received so much in mobile money, but it wasn't meant for you, kindly send it back to me. Or he's uh, been sent, or his Facebook has been hacked into from his mobile phone. You know, things like that. To what extent can they get remedial uh, action from MTN as a service provider? Look, I mean... Of tracking we, for that matter. People, when they receive a message like that, we already have done a lot of education and we continue to do that. If only message that's coming with MTN uh, tag, that's where we are sending. Apart from that, it's not our uh, message. But so, let me maybe put it this way, Mazen. One African proverb goes and quoted from one of the prolific African writers known as Chin Wachebe. He said, the more the hunters learn how to shoot without missing, the more the birds learn how to fly without patching. Every day, MTN puts in place a lot of wonderful security innovations. But this, to the same extent to which you are innovating to put across wonderful security is the same speed at which unscrupulous people are innovating to beat your system. How is the race for wonderful security of your network going from where you sit? Are okay. you finding it a difficult market, Uganda? No, it's, it's, it's not an easy job here. We have a building uh, uh, behind of you. We have a, a group of engineers who are on daily basis putting more uh, new protections. Mm -hmm. And uh, more, uh, definitely it requires more education from us and awareness, whether on social media, whether on radio or TV. Uh, we, we continue doing that. But the main message is uh, people should not respond to anonymous messages. People should only respond when there is a message uh, tagged with MTN. Nobody can tag on behalf, our behalf as an MTN. When they see MTN in their messages or in their emails, means there is something could be serious. And definitely our call centers and our service centers, but more interesting now, we are more active on social media. People can contact us. We continue creating more education, more uh, awareness about how can people make sure that this transaction is coming uh, from MTN Street. Mazen, uh, recently the UN declared uh, internet access as a human right. And MTN went off on a huge campaign saying, yes, you have um, 
declare this a human right, but for us, we continue to offer it not only as a human right, but one of the pillars that drive our business. To what extent are you making that human right that is internet access uh, affordable for the ordinary folk beyond the middle class, which you seem to entertain much more than the ordinary folk? Uh, two years back, we launched a campaign where the UN uh, uh, has declared the internet is your right and everything. Now, uh, for the last two years, uh, we have made a lot of efforts to try to make the internet much more affordable. Currently, at this stage, every Ugandan has uh, a 15 megabyte uh, quota on monthly basis granted for the first one week of each month. That is some argue that that is possibly a drop in the ocean, but nonetheless, no, no, welcome. No, no, but, but that's nine million subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> nine million times uh, uh, 15 megabytes is a huge. Uh, plus the tariffs for the internet access in Uganda. Is if we, are, we can say the cheapest, but it's one of the cheapest in Africa. So this is where we are, where, where we think... Talking about cheap even before I can let you finish your point. There was a time when you just joined this market. Of course, uh, telecom uh, access was extremely expensive. And every day we see the price coming down and making it more affordable. Again, you find a huge section of the population arguing that possibly being on your network and even being on the, you know, on the mobile network is quite an expensive feat. For the most part, many Ugandans have mobile phones, but they possibly don't use them to generate income. They use them as a way to spend the income, many of whom, much of which they don't even have. Look, this is, could be a perception because uh, maybe our brand looks very attractive, very visible. Uh, MTM, everywhere you go, people think uh, we are the most expensive. We are the most affordable. And the evidence that our market share is growing. You cannot say we are the most expensive, our tariffs are increasing. However, people are continue joining us. Uh, all our services now available in, in, in many areas that uh, people have not yet, other telco have not been able to reach there. Uh, in 2013 alone, we have added more than 120 different new areas, coverage areas outside of Kampala. And we, we see on daily basis the number of users, how they are really signing up for our network. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is a perception that this network is very expensive. However, with our product offerings, like the MTN Zone, which offering uh, dynamic tariffing, dynamic discounts. Yeah, where uh, you have got to make a cheap phone call only if you wake up at the, in the dead of the night. No, no, Mazen, no, no, no. what does the future hold? Because we've seen MTN putting across a number of, uh, you know, futuristic innovations. But clearly, the future continues to glow and glow in the direction that you will be the drivers of how life is lived. So what can we expect from you in the near future, in the middle term, and of course, in the long term, in terms Look, of innovation? There, there are two areas. Uh, we, we continue uh, working toward uh, leading the delivery of a new, bold digital world to our customers. Let me just make it simple. We want uh, our customers, we want our users to be connected to the internet all the time. That's that's our direction. We want them to do online shopping. We want them to book online. We want them to pay the bill, pay taxes online. Yeah, but one thing is for sure: the voice call shall always be the hallmark of a mobile telecommunication, uh, you know, service in this country. For example, we love to talk. We love to hear each other speak. So, to what extent shall we? ever get rid of this voice call droppages? It's taking time, but however, uh, uh, making data call or making internet call is also in improving and increasing. We have seen in 2013 only, last year, 100% increase in terms of users of the internet. How about the competition between your SMS platform that costs uh, 60 shillings off peak and 110 shillings uh, uh, intranetwork on peak, as opposed to internet-based SMS services like WhatsApp, and uh, Viber and all the other places. Is that taking a toll on how much you are earning as a company? No, definitely the SMS, uh, definitely the, the tendency now, people are using more the social media to communicate. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why we are focused on how we can make the internet much more affordable and available. So you, which, you, you, which you, we are seeing the you, SMS. You are appear to lose on the SMS platform, but you quickly no, run to where no, uh, the social media is uh, applying uh, and you provide. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Let's look at your social corporate responsibility or corporate social responsibility, as someone want to call it. You are, of course, very well known to sink boreholes, to raise um, uh, billboards wherever we go in this country. You can't miss the yellow MTN color and your wonderful logo. But again, there is always talk that you may be as generous as you appear, but you certainly give back a drop compared to the ocean that you actually fish out in terms of proceeds. To what extent is that sentiment or sentiment true? 
Look, you can't look at corporate social responsibility as just one way of giving back to the community. Being a successful business in Uganda, mm -hmm. being contributing largely to the income of the government. Okay? Mm -hmm. Currently, the telco in Uganda contribute more than 6% from the total income for the government. 6% from telco. And imagine if MTN have 60 to 65% of value share. So what specifically from MTN contributing back to the income of the government? That's only on the economy level. But however, on the corporate social responsibility, we have our, our MTN foundation. Already there is a formula in place, 1% uh, profit after tax dedicated for uh, foundation projects. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. People plus, believe that plus, one percent. No, 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 no. Per one percent, believe me, it's it's uh, it's an amount that we are trying to fulfill all our promises and our expectation, plus all the proceedings that we get from all the other events like the MTM marathon, mm -hmm. or the 400 uh, uh, million that we got last year. Uh, you you plowed it back. So we called it back to the communities. And this year we are going to Karamoja, definitely to deploy all those projects. Very finally, Mazen, of course you're operating in a situation where the government needs to provide you certain basic amenities for you to be able to operate. Number one, the infrastructure. Number two, of course, this country needs to churn out the kind of manpower that you would need to carry your operations out. Now, I'll start from that point. To what extent do you find the infrastructure in Uganda supportive to network? But also, when you look around, of course, you're famed to have such a wonderful workforce, people that are proud to work for you, but also you've got a huge expatriate community in MTN pushing certain products and services to ensure the business is viable. But to what extent are you moving towards Ugandanizing the operations at MTN? And this is no offense to you as non-Ugandan. We are saying, do we soon expect to see an MTN CEO that is Ugandan? Let me try to answer your question in different level. MTN is not only for you to make a voice and SMS and data calls. MTN, the infrastructure we are putting on the ground, have created an environment for the new businesses and for the new investors just to plug and play, like the fiber network that we are putting in place, the data center that we are put, the cloud service that we are put in place. This is all an environment where the new people coming to Uganda to enjoy the existing infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And definitely we are sharing the infrastructure. All the towers that you see across now in Uganda already been managed by a third party company which creating capacity for others to come and also use the same towers. Mm -hmm. Now looking at uh, MTN alone, as, as you have seen, we create a lot of job uh, opportunities. We believe uh, half million, at least half million Ugandan are benefiting directly and directly from here. Now, from Uganda only, we have more than 12 people, 12 Ugandan holding senior position within MTN Group. So it's not only about having a foreigner coming to Uganda. We have almost five people only in the whole MTN in Uganda who are foreigners. However, we have more than 12 Ugandan holding senior position outside. So it's, it's not about skills being bringing here expatriate brother we are about rotation of serve, uh, skills across the mtn group don't you love the way he's answering his questions of course this is a man who's got 18 years of experience in the telecommunications and information technology industries at very senior levels his name is mazen Mure, the ceo of mtn uganda and of course that was it for the big story this morning as we discuss the opportunities and challenges in the mobile telecommunications industry in uganda now we're taking a short break when we return it's Simon Says. It say that if you can't beat them, then join them. Not so long ago, perhaps 18 years ago, 15 years ago, many of us in Uganda never imagined the time when you could get to your kith and kin or carry out any transaction from the palm of your hands. Today, we cannot even imagine life without a mobile phone. But that does not mean that all the 34 million Ugandans have a handset in their hands. Of course, let's not forget that there are children who should not be using these gadgets. But let's talk about the adult population. Now, many of you have argued that, well, why should I have a mobile phone that has all these uh, health adverse effects or that will consume all my cash and therefore you prefer to walk to the bank and queue up or you prefer to pay a visit where you would otherwise have called to find out if the person you're going to visit is there. So many times you walk there only to bounce simply because you've not embraced telecommunication technology. Now, like I said from the start, if you can't beat them, join them. It's high time we all realize that the world has moved so fast and the rug has been pulled from under our feet. We need to get down on the information highway and be a bit modern 
so that we are able to keep our lives and transact our businesses from the palms of our hands. It's a wonderful morning. Have a wonderful time as we continue to give you wonderful segments. Morning at NTV. We'll be right back.